Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. In this episode, I'll be discussing the 2007 spoof epic movie, as directed by Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer, uh, which basically rips to shreds some of the franchises and films that were kind of noticeable and, at the time of its release, homing in on, on those of an epic nature uh, for, for much of its humour and its parody. The film itself came from a time when, when such films were pretty much the rage, you know? Uh, and although parody films were kind of nothing new, uh, a trend which kind of started with 2000's Scary Movie, um, of which the both of these directors of this movie were actually involved initially as writers, it then kind of saw a slew of them kind of be released within a very sh few short years. Most of which uh, were kind of brought to us by these two directors, with this actually being their second such outing, um, their first being 2006's Date Movie, and with another five that follow this one, which, uh, well, let's just say most, <laughs> most of which are generally considered subpar, uh, you could say, at, at, at the very least. Indeed, looking at Wikipedia, it is suggested that Epic Movies specifically ranks amongst one of the worst movies ever made. Which, of course, doesn't bode well, does it? Uh, so, what what did I make of it? Um, well, the movie basically cannibalises the basic plot from the 2005 movie The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. In fact, this is its primary focus, with four supposed orphans, uh, orphan strangers, if you like, from across the globe, coming together after winning golden tickets uh, and access to Willie's Chocolate Factory, a.k.a. ripped straight from the 2005 movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yep, they ripped that one up and not the 1971 classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which I suppose on reflection was a good thing. Um, anyway, the four orphans, uh, Edward as played by Cal Penn, Susan as played by Fawn A. Chambers, Peter as played by Adam Campbell and Lucy as played by Jamie Mays, find out that Willie, as played by Crispin Glover, has some very gruesome intentions uh, for, the, uh, for the hapless four, with a plan to make them part of his candy. See where this is all going, yeah? In their escape, they stumble through a magical doorway to another world. Ganania. It's not quite pronounced that, but it's spelt like that. Ganania. Copyright issues, I'm sure. Ruled by the evil white witch. Well, not quite witch, but a similar word, uh, beginning with B, which I can't use if I want to actually keep my ads on these videos, as played by Stifler's mum herself. Jennifer Coolidge. So you're going to have to use your own imagination when I'm saying witch. The White Witch uh, has designs on Narnia uh, to reshape it from scratch using a plot taken straight from the 2006 movie Superman Returns. But an ancient prophecy tells of the arrival of the Four Orphans who, it turns out, are actually related and are the only force that can stand in the witch's way and defeat her plans once and for all. So, ultimately, did I find this movie to be as bad as they say? Well, no. Um, I must admit that I do find these movies somewhat amusing. I'm not going to lie. And I do actually enjoy picking out all of the different films that they send up. However, this is by far not the most thought out and well put together example of them. It might not be a bad movie, in my opinion, but it's certainly not a good one either. There are quite a few parody movies that actually do do things so much better than this one does. But on the flip side, it's an easy digest. Um, it's not overcomplicated and doesn't really mean any harm. It just doesn't do things all that well and really just opts to kind of poke fun at characters and concepts rather you know, forcing the humour with cheap shots, if you like, and cheapest tactics and trashiest costumes they could find. Sending up the characters in the most stupid and lowbrow way possible, and then stealing literally everything from other movies point blank. 
rather than kind of finding a way to include them seamlessly into a more originally derived plot. Not all that particularly clever, um, and with an unimaginative storytelling kind of style, lazy and, and really forgettable characters. The problem I find with many of these movies, particularly from the team behind this movie and the others kind of in their repertoire, ultimately, ultimately is that they just really don't know when to stop. Um, many of the jokes go on far too long, are too repetitive and of course have to include the mandatory toilet humour, fart gags and totally unnecessary throw up scenes, you know. I find it really hard to understand why the filmmakers ever thought people found this funny. But the simple fact of the matter is, they did. Um, the critics may hate these films, but they are usually very financially successful. At least they were back into the, in, in the 2000s. An epic movie is no exception um, by all accounts. Where this movie really kind of fails for me now is that it seems just so dated. I know that that's always the risk when such movies are, you know, as popular as these are, and they, they kind of go on the popularity of the films that it chooses to send up. And not it, it not only chooses to send up classic franchises such as Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, X Men, Mission Impossible, for instance, but it but it also sends up quite a few films that although. You know, they had some kind of time in the limelight back when they were released, such as Nacho Libre, Snakes on a Plane, Click, and on a number of pop culture references, which, whilst funny themselves and fairly iconic at the time, were certainly not that epic. So it almost seemed like they were kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel already, in you know, in terms of content. And more so now that many of these films have kind of fallen by the wayside, having not really stood the test of time all that well themselves. But I would be lying um, if I didn't say that the film got a few giggles out of me, you know, because it did. I did actually watch this with our son, um, who absolutely loves slapstick comedy. You know, upon reflection, I did find out that the film was Certificate 15. So, oops. Uh, but although he didn't get the movie's references per se... He was in stitches nonetheless at all of the stupid gags and the slapstick that did prevail. And you know what? It certainly made the experience all the more enjoyable watching it with somebody who actually did find that, that the film funny, you know? Some of the best jokes were, in actual fact, those actually linked to other films the actors themselves had actually been in, such as American Pie and um, Harold and Kumar, which were a lot more subtle in their approach and indeed played to the actors' strengths and for what they had kind of become known for. Indeed, I did actually enjoy the music, for the most part, too. Um, composed by Edward Schirmer, um, it actually captures the essence of the movies to which it was actually trying to parody. Um, and, and indeed, better than the jokes, to be fair, you know, the jokes themselves. So did, too, the cinematography, um, which I must admit, definitely captured both the look and the feel of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which together do very much go in the film's credit in that respect. Overall, ultimately, this film kind of plays out like a really cheap panto, you know? More for kids, um, but aimed at adults. And not with nearly enough of the same level of audience involvement as, as needed, you know, as would be in a panto, you know? The characters are dumb um, and not very well thought out, uh, other than to provide some cheap shots at other franchises, which this basically rips apart in the cheapest and tackiest way possible, with only really a few glimmers of hope along the way. However, it's an easy watch. You know, it's not being at all overcomplicated, and to be honest... One of the tamer movies in the genre, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm honest. Not really seeking to offend. The quota of disgusting jokes was, was lower than some. I mean, but overly, not really wanting to push that many buttons at all. So, yeah, an, an easy watch, you know, and fairly tasteful. It, it's certainly not as clever um, as it could have been in terms of comedy. 
It goes for the observed, uh, the stupid and the obvious, you know? Taking the Mickey and embellishing character traits to its own devices, rather than kind of constructing comedy and plot lines of its own, which the best ones always do. Think Austin Powers, you know? It's not a riot uh, by any stretch, but it was enjoyable watching it with somebody who loves all the silliness. That I must admit, you know, um, that, that that was an experience. It was nice. So that brings me to the end of this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. We've absolutely loved having here at SciFest Movie Talk. We would definitely love to have you back. But most of all, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.